Welcome to Blunsdon. We are doing the Q&A video session, slightly overdue. We did originally plan to do it in January, February, but as always, life gets in the way. But nonetheless, here we are. So just to introduce ourselves, I'm Andy Collett. To my left is John Nettin, uh, Dr. Steve Rapley, and Graham Muspratt. So between us, we, we will answer your questions as best we can. So the first question we had is one that we quite often get with the project, and that's what livery will she steam in? Well, of course, General Steam Navigation actually carried a number of liveries during her service with the Southern Railway and later British Railways. So she was initially introduced in, in 1944 and was in wartime black livery before going into Malachite Green and then Malachite Green with British Railways lettering. And then she avoided being in BR Express Blue. She was one of the three Merchant Navy class locomotives that didn't gain BR Express Blue, uh, being number 11, uh, number 14 and also number 23. Um, but she then gained BR Brunswick Green. We actually will be able to have all those liveries, even the Express Passenger Blue, if we so wish. And ultimately that decision will be down to our shareholders uh, in a vote to decide which livery she goes in. But throughout her 10 year initial boiler certificate and hopefully an ongoing boiler certificate post then, we'll have all those liveries available as an option for us to, uh, to run her in, in due course. So uh, hopefully you'll see her in a number of liveries during her preservation career. Uh, when do you expect General Steam's navigation's restoration to be finished? Well, in an ideal world, we'd be looking at 10 to 12 years, but of course, it depends on funding. The faster we can get the money in, within reason, the faster we can complete General Steam navigation. So if there's anybody out there with very deep pockets, we can accelerate that time frame. But I think realistically, uh, 10 to 12 years is a reasonable shout. Okay, so this question is, will she go on the main line? The simple answer is yes. Um, it's a big locomotive that we're restoring and it deserves to be out there doing 70 miles an hour um, going on the main line. So yes, she will be going on the main line. What is the latest with the crank axle? Um, <clears throat> we're making progress with the crank axle. We have a design for it that we can put to manufacture. We have substantiated what material we want to make it from. We're in conversations with our accreditation um, partner, Ricardo, on making sure the design is up to what we need and um, meets mainline standards. And we're in conversation with other locomotive groups about collaborating on manufacture of um, axles to save cost between us. This next question is, will GSN feature the bulbous front casing design? And this is actually referring to the section of casing uh, that was known as the front fairing between the front buffer beam and the cylinder block. Now, most Merchant Navy Pacifics had an upper fairing um, from the top part of the cylinder through to the buffer beam. And uniquely for certainly the second series and third series locomotives, General Steam Navigation was introduced with a lower, quite bulbous round casing right down to the bottom edge of the piston and between the cylinder block, the piston and the buffer beam, which was unique to her other than a similar version being initially fitted to number one channel packet when she was first introduced. In 1948, this bottom half of the casing was removed and just left the upper part of the fairing. And then in BR days, even the upper fairing was removed, partly just to ease any maintenance that was going on on the locomotive. Now we have the option. There's no reason why we can't manufacture a replacement bulbous fairing as well as the upper fairing and run her for periods with or without either types of fairing. Um, certainly if there's anybody out there that wishes to sponsor the manufacturer of that lower bulbous part of the, of the casing then we'll be uh, more than happy to hear from you and, uh, and we can put that ambition into, uh, into practice. So the next question is how much to completely restore the engine? Um, difficult question to answer so I, I would say that at the moment we're budgeting for approximately one and a half million pounds to fully restore the locomotive and an additional quarter of a million pounds to, uh, to take the locomotive onto the main line. 
Um, that's not just the locomotive, that means we'll have to provide a support coach, we'll need to buy generators and of course there's the additional cost of, uh, of certifying the locomotive to, to, to run on, on, on network rail. Of course, in, in terms of the, of, the, of the budget, it is just a budget. Um, until we've been able to undertake a full engineering assessment of the locomotive, we won't really know the true cost. But at the moment, the budget stands at £1.5 million. Pounds. Tender. OK, um, so this question is, what style of tender do we intend to construct for the locomotive? Um, so the Merchant Navy's ran with many different styles. What we're likely to end up with is one that is essentially a, a Series 3 tender, um, has a slightly higher uh, water capacity, um, is it 6,000 gallons? 6,000 gallons, yes. And five tonnes of coal as built, though we may adjust that to uh, reflect modern operating conditions. It's easier to get water at a station stop than it is to get coal. Um, it will almost certainly be constructed with the, the raves to give the, the full air smooth profile of the loco and we will look at, um, especially for mainline running, um, different braking options so we can do both air braking and vacuum braking, so some form of pump probably in the back of the tender. Um, and things like the raves give us the opportunity to fit that without distracting from the appearance. Um, the next question is also for me. It's uh, what is the condition of the boiler and what work do you anticipate will be required for its return to steam? Um, the boiler is generally, we think, in a good condition. We've not had it assessed by a boiler inspector yet. There's um, some issues with the both of the tube plates, um, especially the front one may need um, at least the bottom third of it replacing. It may be that we want to replace the entire front tube plate. The rear tube plate needs some repairs, but other than that, the boiler itself seems in quite good condition. Um, so it will need a full examination to, to confirm that, but um, it's, it's not in the worst condition. Um, there's obviously bits need replacing in the firebox, um, so some work on the foundation ring is probably likely. Um, but it's, it's generally in good condition. So just to touch on the background to our boiler, uh, our boiler is actually older than General Steam Navigation. It's actually a first series boiler that was first fitted to 21C number eight. Um, because all the boilers were actually in interchangeable during the lifetime of the boiler, it's actually been on number eight, number nine, and number 24 before finally resting on number 11. And we lifted it off the frames in October 2020 for the first time in 65 years. Um, so it is in remarkable condition considering it's, it's one of the very original early series boilers. The next question is, how will we address the problems that led to the infamous casing fires on some of the bullied uh, Merchant Navy Pacifics? This actually stems from the lubrication for the drive axles being gravity fed from lubricators inside the cab. And when the locomotive was stationary, whether it's at Waterloo waiting to depart with a 500 tonne express to the west of England or perhaps Bournemouth, um, that gravity feeding of the lubrication continued even when stationary and intended to overfill the uh, lubrication points on the axle. And that oil had to go somewhere and it tended to run down the inside of the wheel sets, the bullet Firth Brown profile wheels, so uh, similar to the American box popped wheels uh, with no spokes. And that oil would collect in the webbing and when the loco did move, that oil generally got thrown up um, into the cladding. Now the first series of 10 Merchant Navy Pacifics actually had splashes as part of the uh, casing design. And for lightness reasons, they were removed or not fitted to the next 20. And it's only the, the next 20 that really suffered this issue. And the ignition of that oil was not down to the temperature of the boiler, but actually due to brake um, sparks, uh, sparks flying up from the, from the brake blocks when, when braking. So in the 1950s, the brake block material was actually changed to a slightly different grade of cast iron, and that reduced the instances of sparks flying up. So we will continue to use a brake block material that doesn't have the same sparking potential as the earlier material. And actually with careful cleaning of the locomotive, 
um, and more regular cleaning of the locomotive than it probably got in service and, and in preservation a number of light pacifics that have been running in original form with that increased maintenance and care um, these issues haven't arisen uh, since then. Um, this question comes up occasionally it's can't you just put the casing on the rebuilt chassis and be done with it? Well our project is not a vanity project we're not doing it just to see the casing on the locomotive we're doing it to effectively recreate the missing link in preservation for Bullard's uh, Merchant Navy locomotives. All the ones in preservation, because the entire class were rebuilt between 1956 and 1959, mean that currently every preserved Bullard Merchant Navy Pacific is of the rebuilt form. The original style, yes it may have had some issues which can be corrected in preservation and some of which were, were corrected even before they were rebuilt. Um, does mean that it's a, a missing link in the preservation. The original style locomotives were certainly by the crews of the time known to be much freer running locomotives um, due to the balanced design of the chain driven valve gear that Bullitt developed uniquely and patented. So we're not just wanting to create a loco that looks like an original Pacific. We want to create an original Bullitt chain valve gear driven Merchant Navy Pacific. So that's what the project's about. It's about actually recreating that missing link in its entirety and not just putting a piece of metal um, to cover the top of the boiler um, on a re essentially a rebuilt machine. Because the look with the outside valve gear that the rebuilts had would be completely different from Bullard's original design. And that's what we're in this project to recreate is Bullard's original design, pretty much as it would have been in 1959 running um, before it was rebuilt, uh, complete with that chain driven valve gear. So this question is, is there any original condition design aspects that will need to be rectified for modern mainline running? Um, to my mind, the only original piece of the design that needs rectifying is the crank axle. Um, the original one obviously failed at Krukern on um, the Merchant Navy and that was modified in BR service on six of the um, original merchant navies including general steam navigation to a, a balanced design um, and that is the one that we'll be putting on general steam and every other part of the design I mean, we may we're not going to look at things like the original cab design we'll probably go for the the rebuilt the the modified one that was fitted wedge in shape cab, wedge yeah. shape in um, the late 40s because that is better for exhaust clearance but everything else about the design it works um, it's generally the same as is on the light pacifics that run on the main line so it should be um, suitable for main line running for us potentially ash pan dampers though steve is that is that an option with the rebuilts having oh, it, having dampers on the well, ash pans and well, the originals not i thought the originals did have dampers on the ash pans the light pacifics didn't but i thought the the, mer the merchants such, did no. well we may look at dampers um because that things that there are features of the rebuilt design that will fit onto an original that could improve the operation of the locomotive in terms of fuel economy essentially either coal or water and things like dampers we could look at um, and we're looking at the idea of exhaust modifications that can have an impact not only on how the loco operates but on exhaust clearance um, some of the studies we've done with Loughborough show that slight tweaks can actually suddenly cause the exhaust to start clearing um, so that is a minor rectification that could help mainline running so this next question it kind of links to the previous one um, it's essentially would we consider having two different cabs for general steam navigation one um, for mainline running and one for heritage um, so the latter one on mainline and the original for heritage lines um, i don't think that's a sensible option that um, the 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 change in the cab the wedge shape was about exhaust clearance um, it's it's not just an aesthetic it's it's safety um, the wedge cab works at all speeds um, and works better than the original so I think we'd have to go with with the wedge shape um, for safety reasons it it helps the driver see having been on the, the foot plate of a, a light Pacific um, with it you do get good visibility um, and that's, that's what we're going to go for
Uh, the last couple of questions are kind of interlinked. Uh, the first question is, will you run her on parts of the Somerset and Dorset Joint Railway, uh, such as Midsummer Norton? In all honesty, highly unlikely, because she'd be far too much engine for such a short railway. And I don't think she'd actually physically fit into the sides at Midsummer Norton. I could, be, I could stand to be corrected on that, but I think that's very unlikely. They are doing a restoration project down at Shillingston, further south on the Somerset and Dorset, and perhaps, you know, if, if they ever get a reasonable amount of run in line there, I'd say, you know, never say never, but probably unlikely. And, yeah, the second part of the question, in a way, you say she'll run on the Swindon and Cricklade Railway. Isn't a 2.5-mile track wasted on such a large loco? Yes, but... The Swindon and Cricklade Railway, they've been absolutely brilliant to us. They've given us a home for restoration, and we can't thank them enough for that. And the Swindon and Cricklade will be the test bed for general steam navigation. We'll run her in on the railway, but yes, ultimately she is too much engine for this line, so she'll be very much a travelling ambassador for the Swindon and Cricklade Railway. And of course, she'll have periods away on the main line and visiting other heritage railways, the Great Central being a obvious example so while Blunsden will always remain GSN's spiritual home she will spend a lot of time away from here. So hopefully you've found the answers to some of these questions interesting um, it may even spark further questions and we're always willing to uh, hear from anyone that's interested in the project uh, you can do so via our website at 35011 gsn.co.uk there's a contact us form on there there's also details on how you can join the locomotive society or even get involved as a shareholder of the, and become a part owner in the locomotive yourself so go along to www.35011gsn.co.uk and you'll get full details on the project there thank you uh, that concludes the list of questions so i hope everybody's found them useful and informative the answers and yeah don't ever be afraid to get in touch and in future we'll answer any further questions you may have. So it's good night from me and it's good night from them.